Well, hello and good morning to you, Year 9. Just talking you through today's lesson with this video. So as with the ones we've done like this before, you'll just want to use this to listen to some bits, pause other bits to do your work, and then finally listen to my guidance on what I want you to do at the very end. So a quick reminder then, so obviously we're a few weeks into this now, unseen poetry and why is it you have to study it exactly? Well, as I've put there, it shows those following things on your bullet points there, like the ability to think on your feet, for example, which is a definite life skill. Deal with something you haven't studied. Again, anyone, well, not anyone, but lots of people can work hard and hard and hard and learn something. But when you're actually presented with something new, it challenges those different skills. Shows you can show, understand someone else's point of view and their ideas is the absolute key to all poetry and much of literature as well. Being able to empathise and also engage with somebody else's thoughts. And finally, deal with figurative language. Language, figurative language like metaphor and things which aren't literal and that's a really important skill for life as well so those are just some things just to consider as we move on to my next slide um, the steps that we've gone through before as well which I just want you to bear in mind really we've done this a few times now but about reading that poem is step one highlighting anything which leaps out at you first then look at the title look at the connotations of the poem can you work out the messages from those things particularly like the language choices as well as the title the third step like deciding on three choices then because when it comes to the GCSE final exams You'll have about half an hour on this, so you won't have time to talk about the entire poem. It's almost narrowing your thoughts down to those three key parts. And finally, step four, writing your answer following the PEAR structure. Now, you don't have to worry. You're not going to actually do any of that directly today as in the writing at step four, but we are going to use an unseen poem and work through some of those steps. And I want to introduce you to Simon Armitage. He is a poet, of course. He is somebody you are going to meet uh, again through your GCSEs because he has written another one of the poems which features in the anthology of 15 poems that you will study by the end of year 11. Um, so there it says, British poet, uh, born and lives in Yorkshire. He's got a very sort of Yorkshire twang to his accent and the way he speaks and also the way he writes. Uh, poet laureate, so he is somebody who's considered uh, a writer of poetry for the country. And his poetry, as it says there, deals with a variety of topics and themes. I'm not going to read necessarily the bottom bit there, but I point out some of the key bits I've highlighted in red. A colloquial style, which means very informal style, sort of almost a little bit chatty in some ways. There's definitely strong rhythms that come through his poetry. It very rarely rhymes, but you sometimes just get hints of internal rhyme in his poetry, not necessarily the ends of lines. And as I've put the other bit there, is often quite a lot of monologue used here as well. He adopts the voice of the person speaking in the poem. So it's not always him. He almost writes as somebody else. And deadpan is something very good as well. Deadpan is sort of very dry delivery. Not setting up jokes, obviously, but almost subtle, dry jokes. So what we're going to do is move on in a second to actually read one of his poems. It's one of my favourites. I had to study this one when I was uh, studying GCSE. It's no longer in the GCSEs, but I still consider it a really good poem. And you might be able to empathise a little bit because it is set in school. So here it is. I will read it through the first time and then I'll ask you to pause and reread it a second time to yourself really and decide which bits leap out at you. So the picture on the right hand side is a clue by the way, the Bunsen burner. So here we go. I am very bothered when I think of the bad things I have done in my life. Not least that time in the chemistry lab where I held a pair of scissors by the blades and played the handles in the naked lilac flame of the Bunsen burner, then called your name and handed them over. Oh, the unrivalled stench of branded skin as you slipped your thumb and middle finger in, then couldn't shake off the two burning rings, marked, the doctor said, for eternity. Don't believe me, please, if I say that was just my buttered fingered way at thirteen of asking you if you would marry me. What is it? Well, it's sort of a very clumsy sort of love poem, I suppose, in some ways. Yes, it is quite grim in some ways, but also there's a certain innocence and, as he says, butterfingered is a key word I think that leaps out of me there. Uh, butterfingered, uncontrolled, undelicate. Um, clumsy way of handling things if you're butterfingered but that's his sort of way of dealing with love at this he almost has marked where a ring would go on the finger and it's all a form of ring has gone there but it's been branded there so it's definitely not meant to be violent I often get that reaction from students of just what really that's very horrible that's grim that's violent that's it's it's don't read into it too much okay or else you'll get absolutely hooked on that so i'm going to go quiet for a few seconds now just reread it one more time to yourself and decide which of those lines really leap out at you
Okay, well, as I say, that's the one we're using as inspiration today. So we're not going to do a big bit of PEAR analysis. But if it was me, I'd maybe point out some of the love imagery, like the idea of the rings, the word eternity comes up there, and obviously marry comes up there as well. Um, and it's of an innocence, he plays the handles in the flame. It's not like a deliberate, violent act. There's sort of some very light language going on there. But then we've got this, oh, the unrivaled stench of branded skin that words like stench and branded almost have that much stronger edge to their language um, anyway we move on and this is what I'd like you to do first please this is one of the main one of the first main things I'm looking for when you submit your work later task number one could you write down your answers to these vipers cave questions on your page please they need to be answered fully number one is quite literally just a short answer but then two three and four will take a little bit longer so i'm going to go quiet now and give yourself 10 minutes to have a go at that please off you go okay well now we move on to a little bit of creativity from you and it's your turn to become a poet. I'm going to be asking you to use the Armitage style, the poem that you have just read together, and some of his lines even as well, to create your own confessional poem. So confessional as in offering up something that you have done which you regret in your life. Um, I've done this activity before and sometimes students will say, I haven't got anything, I haven't got anything, in which case you're going to need to use his ideas as inspiration, the one I'm about to give you very shortly as inspiration, and also maybe creativity and making up something which could have happened or something you've seen happen to somebody else. Could be primary school, could be secondary school, really don't mind. Um, on the left hand side in the yellow box then, um, I've thrown in some sentence starter lines that could work in different places for you to use. So those are there to try and help and guide you. On the right hand side, points I'll read out now. Remember, poems have rhythm and flow. They don't need to rhyme. Simon Armitage has proved that very much. It sounded poetic and there were maybe hints of those internal rhymes I talked about, but actually they don't need to rhyme all the way. As I've said there, try and let the words pour out of you. If you try too hard to construct something, you will find that's a block. Whereas if you just let the words pour out first time, actually you're much more likely to have success. And that's what I mean by don't overthink what you're writing. And just aim to choose a few descriptive words and that will make it poetic. Sort of words like he used unrivaled or stench, for example. Those sorts of words are quite poetic words, even if they are quite grim maybe. Now what I want to do is a final thing for you before I set you off to have a go at your own for 25 minutes please and submit those to me is I just want to share something I wrote which is about a true incident in my life yep and I'll talk about it in a second. So I've underlined sorry, the, uh, the bits that you could maybe use yourself. I'm very bothered when I think of the bad things I have done in my life, not least the time when we returned from the football field full of laughter and pretend masculinity. Our boisterous shouts and pushes echoing down corridors, our boisterous words and insults thrown at each other. We approach the changing rooms, that pit of teenage odour and cheap deodorant. Ahead of me, the doors were shut, but it wasn't my hands I used to open them, but my foot that I planted on the panes with power, that saw the sudden shattering spread across the pane, a spider's web of splintered guilt. Oh, I will never forget the rush of blood to my cheeks as I stood before the headmaster confessing my crime. My clumsy showing off to my friends, my wish that I could rewind those few seconds and make another choice. The guilt that meant I would never act the clown again. It felt quite good to get that off my chest, actually. It was an instant on describing where we were coming back from a PE lesson at some point, and these were slightly older wooden doors, but they had big glass panes in the middle, and they had that crisscross of like metal inside the glass to stop it completely breaking. And I went and, sort of being stupid, went and kicked the door open, but instead of kicking it on the wooden frame, I used the glass when I kicked it, and the just thing shattered everywhere. Uh, it didn't break all over the floor, by which I mean the glass just had a massive like cracks all over it. And God, I felt guilty. <laughs> and I was sent to the headmaster to explain what I'd done. And yes, it had a real impact on me. So there you go. That's me confessing. 
Uh, thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video because now I've managed to sort of confess myself. I do this every year, so it doesn't necessarily get any easier. But that's my one. You could use that as inspiration, other things. But again, look at my poem. I don't think it's the best thing I've ever written, but it sounds a bit poetic because of some of the word choices I've made and also because of some of the line layout even as well. I didn't manage to include any rhyme, but I did have some strong plosives, like I planted the pains with power and even the sibilance of sudden shattering spread across the pain. Those were deliberate things. So see what you can come up with, guys. I'm very much looking forward to your confessions. It might even be worth you um, just making a note on the side of your poem exactly what happened for me just so I understand a bit more but I very much look forward to whatever you manage to submit thanks for watching all the way through and uh, hope to see you soon bye bye